Please welcome Chevrolet Vice President Scott Bell. All right. Good evening. Great to have you all here and, and just thank you for taking the time to join us for what will be a very, very special night and an unforgettable one. On, I can assure you of that. We are here tonight to celebrate an American icon, the Chevrolet Corvette. All right, the Corvette was first introduced, hard to believe, over 70 years ago in 1953. And Corvette has always embodied the ultimate Chevrolet performance design and engineering innovation and has raised the bar every generation we put on the street. And thanks to its strong legacy and innovation, Corvette not only continues to be a complete success in the marketplace, but it actually dominates the luxury sports segment with a staggering 50% market share with competitors like the 911 in that segment. So it's probably no surprise Corvette has always attracted customers new to our brand, but none before like the C8 platform. And five years ago, which is hard to believe that was five years ago, and I'm sure many of you were with us that night, we introduced the eighth generation Corvette. That Stingray that we pulled out that day was the first ever to have a midsize engine configuration and an incredible, incredible design. A supercar beating performance capability and unparalleled consumer demand. And we have enjoyed that for five years. We still have customers to this day on waiting lists for this incredible, incredible car. And we didn't stop with Stingray, as you all know, we put the world on notice with the Corvette Z06 just a few years later. And that was developed in parallel with our championship winning CIR race car. And Z06 is track born, street ready, and it's a supercar. And Z06 provides a driving experience like no other, which starts with the sound, that great, great sound and feeling that's generated by that LT6 engine, that 5.5 liter flat plane crank Gemini V8, which is hand assembled by our master engine builders in our own performance center at Bowling Green Assembly. And at 670 horsepower, it is the highest horsepower naturally aspirated V8 to ever hit the market in any production car. Then last year, we introduced a Corvette that we said was one like none. As the first all-wheel drive Corvette, the first electrified Corvette, this sure-footed E-Ray is a Corvette for every season and every surface. And it's capable of zero to 60 in a blistering 2.5 seconds, which made it at the time the quickest Corvette ever. Well, this is all new Corvette family builds on an awesome foundation that started with that mid-engine Stingray. And tonight you all are gonna be the very first to see the 2025 Corvette ZR1, which is all about unrelenting power, premium prestige, and refinement. Now dating back to 1970, when we first debuted the ZR1 performance package on the then the third generation Corvette, this package laid a foundation for some of the quickest, accelerating, fastest, and most capable handling Corvettes to come. And since then, there have only been three other ZR1s, the C4, the C6, and of course, the C7. And that fourth generation ZR1 was the Corvette built to take on the world. And at the time, it was a super bet to, that all our engineers could have hoped for. It was then that it earned the title King of the Hill. Now, each time that nameplate has returned, Chevrolet has raised the bar. And every time ZR1 was about pushing the boundaries of Corvette's capabilities. The latest ZR1, I can guarantee you, does not stray from that ethos. From Stingray to Z06 to E-Ray, and now ZR1, the Corvette family continues to elevate with each new iteration and challenge the very best in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to say the unthinkable has arrived. All right, there you have it. You're the very first to see the all new 2025 Corvette ZR1, and I can assure you the unthinkable is definitely here on this stage tonight. And also now making its debut for the very first time, is the Corvette ZR1 convertible. So ladies and gentlemen, the man whose vision and passion for performance 
continuously pushes us and our entire company to do the unthinkable, our president, Mark Rose. And also, the man who has been tasked to making the unthinkable a reality is our Corvette Chief Executive, Taj Jector. Taj, thank you very much for a great car. Mark, welcome to the stage. All right, you guys take it away. Thank you, Scott, and welcome, everybody. You know, I think I can speak, speak for Scott and the entire team with Taj when I say how thrilled we are to be here tonight doing this, right? Come on. Uh, every time I drive this car, I have to pinch myself <laughs> and remind myself it's really real. It's been exactly five years and one week since the night we first showed the mid-engine C8 Corvette to the world. That night, Taj and I explained that the seventh generation of the Corvette that we had essentially pushed the limits of what we could do from that configuration. C7 was as close to perfection as a front engine rear drive Corvette was going to get. There was no getting around it. We were approaching the limits of physics and applying power to the ground with that setup. That's why on July 18th, 2020, we introduced what Zora Arcus Duntoff has all wanted. A mid-engine, absolutely perfectly balanced Corvette. I also remember specifically saying that evening as the C8 Stingray sat proudly on that stage, we are just getting started. We knew more power was available. We knew more power and performance were coming. As Scott mentioned, they arrived in the form of the Z06, the E-Ray, and followed by the Stingray. And now we have the return of the king, the ZR1. We're talking about a lot of horsepower here, aren't we, Tej? Uh, yes, yeah, a lot of horsepower. We're talking about 1,064 horsepower. And that's impressive enough, but it comes with no asterisk. That's pump fuel, no ethanol, no race gas, no special calibrations, straight from the factory. That's what it delivers. That is an awful lot, Tej. <laughs> <laughs> the first time it's ever been four digits, right? Yeah. I mean, seriously. That it never makes, came close. It, it makes it the most powerful V8 ever produced in America by an auto manufacturer. Think about that for a minute. Every time we've introduced a new member of the C8 family, I've had to say it's the fastest Corvette ever. And so far, I can honestly say I never get tired of saying that, Ted. Strangely enough, neither do I. <laughs> and you and I have shared the stage many times yeah. saying exactly that. So, uh, you know, we got a car of extremes here. So let me give you some of the numbers here. 828 foot pounds of torque. Uh, that's a lot. Uh, that's at 6,000 RPM, but more importantly, it delivers over 800 foot pounds of torque from 3,000 to almost 7,000. This thing pulls like crazy through the breath of the band. It comes from the 5.5 liter twin turbocharged double overhead cam, flat plank crank V8 that we call the LT7. So other numbers, uh, we're not done with our work, uh, but we can give you, give you other numbers we're confident of. We know the top speed is gonna be comfortably, comfortably over 215 miles an hour, making it the fastest, literally the fastest Corvette ever. Quarter mile time dispatched in under 10 seconds at a top speed about 150 miles an hour. So if you remember prior year ones, it's like 15 miles an hour top speed, higher than we've done before. So a massive uh, step up from what we've previously been able to do. We upgraded the whole car uh, and you can see some of the aero stuff on Mark's car in particular. That uh, downforce package uh, creates 1200, over 1200, uh, pounds of downforce at top speed. That's incredible. You think about that. Um, think about what that does to the rear end of the car and how, how that makes the car feel. It's just, it's magical. That, that especially is critical to the handling of vehicle dynamics, especially on the track. You can absolutely feel the magic um, each and every time you drive it. Every time you drive this car, it's just, it's, it's a really amazing experience. The power, the precision of the steering, the grip, the braking, the downforce, it all works together in perfection. It is a triumph of vehicle integration. ZR1 represents nothing less than the pinnacle of engineering for Corvette, Chevrolet, 
and something only GM can do, and we do it in-house. Yep, every bit of it. It's uh, so proud for both of us to lead the team that's capable of doing this car, soup to nuts, bumper to bumper, all of it in-house. It's one of the best handling, most incredible cars I've ever had the pleasure of working on or driving. As Mark said, we knew with this architecture, the C8 Stingray just started it. We knew that would make all the difference. And as you get more and more power, the benefits of the architecture uh, shine even more. It completely changes the perception of vehicle handling and responsiveness. No Corvette until the C8 ever felt so comfortable, so nimble, and yet completely stable. That's what really allowed us to really go for it on the CR1, this big step up because the architecture could handle it. A vehicle designed and built with the dynamics and integrity required to be everything we wanted this year one to be and do it with power, speed, and grace. That's why it can take an engine that's more than 300 horsepower more than the last gen CR1 and really run with it. The twin turbo LT7, another first, does a great job and really pushes the boundaries of what engine, any kind of engine architecture can do. It has intelligent anti-lag engine calibration techniques and adapts to the driver's style. When you have a big, powerful turbo motor, turbo lag is one thing you expect. You don't have it in this car. It's amazing. All around the rest of the car, lots of upgrades, uh, new brake system, biggest brakes we ever put on a car, uh, new technology, uh, different kind of manufacturing helps reject heat uh, more effectively, also more durable on the track. And so, uh, we have to do the same job that we did on the other models, make this car absolutely bulletproof on the track. So all of the subsystems, everything, brake cooling, cooling the engine, the intercooler, all of that stuff, highly, highly engineered to make this car, even with over a thousand horsepower, absolutely bulletproof on the track, air conditioning running, pro driver at the wheel, super hot day. Uh, the car, the most comfortable place to be at a track is at the wheel of a Corvette. It's just a remarkable vehicle and combined with mechanical upgrades throughout, electronic upgrades throughout, all of it tailored specifically for the ZR1, it adds up to what we've been teasing it as unthinkable. There's just no other way to describe it. I've personally experienced over 1.5 lateral Gs at over 200 miles per hour. So here's the car at its limit, sliding it over 200 miles an hour, pulling 1.5 Gs. That's an experience I never thought I'd have in my career. And it gives the impression, it gives the impression that this CR1 is a, a supercar competitive uh, with anything. It's just that good. And that's why we called it unthinkable. It is also, as we are showing here, also like other Corvette models available in coupe or convertible form. It's so good that it earned a split window. So if you haven't seen the rear of the car quite yet, um, it's something very, very special. Yeah, we've used a split window once before, 1963. Uh, it was a design element. Uh, it's highly prized today. Uh, it was a pure aesthetic. Uh, it add on, it, it, you know, it made the design phenomenal. Super collector's car, but it really do anything for performance. That's not true today. We brought down that design cue but we made it highly functional. We put louvers in it, and so it gives us additional area to vent the engine compartment for additional cooling. It's so effective. You know, it's like the perfect blend of a cool aesthetic and a function, and we've actually been using it on the race car for the last couple of seasons. So it's been hiding in plain sight. It's been right there, nobody noticed it, and here it is uh, on the ZR1. I talked about the aerodynamics. We paid a lot of attention. It's a lot more than the big wing, although that is a big ass wing. Uh, 1,200 pounds of uh, downforce, that's why the car can pull well over um, its low speed lateral Gs uh, and why we've seen even higher than 1.5 Gs uh, at very high speeds. It's obviously a wing you can't miss. We also offer the car in a more streamlined. This is the car that'll run the top speed. Uh, we haven't done the top speed testing yet. We will and we'll show you a video and we'll do it as we always do it. Two ways, flying mile, measured time, video to prove it. So it won't be just some claim, it'll be out there and we're confident enough today to say it's gonna be by far the fastest Corvette we've ever done at well over 215 miles an hour. So literally every component on this car was enhanced and designed to accomplish the ZR1's mission 
unmatched performance. You know, when you take a look inside, you'll find the interior matches the passion inspired um, by the ZR1's performance as well. You'll see expert craftsmanship and attention to detail with the finest materials, unique ZR1 plaques and stitch patterns. And of course, when you glance at the driver's display, you'll see their first factory turbocharged Corvette ever gets a boost gauge. <laughs> so it's, I'm not used to looking at it uh, yet, quite yet, but um, you know, Taj, um, one thing all the great Corvettes of recent years and decades have had in common is you. Your knowledge, your skills, your hard work, your passion. We know you're days away from retirement after 47 years of an unbelievable career with GM. Stand up here with you and this ZR1 masterpiece is a complete honor for me, something I will never ever forget and I've been looking forward to for a long time. Someone once said, it's a nice thing to hit a home run at your last at bat. This fantastic ZR1, your crowning achievement, is much more than a home run. In fact, it's the biggest, fastest, checkered flag I've ever seen. So thank you for making Corvette the glorious American sports car. It remains. Thank you for making our company better and for driving us to make great cars. Thank you for leaving us with the fastest and most powerful Corvette ever. And thank you for being a great friend to me and to the whole team. Now to show your appreciation from us for the legacy you have left here at GM and Corvette, all model year 25 Corvettes and beyond will include a profile of your head etched in the windshield for ZR1 specifically. It'll be on the rear window and on the front tunnel reinforcement panel, right underneath the nose of the car for 25 and beyond. So if, uh, Ashley, thank you, Mark. Thank you, appreciate that. Huge deal. So, and thanks to all of you for joining us here for this special event. We have one last surprise for you here tonight. So if you have a camera or video device, you might want to get it ready. Let's see what a twin turbo, 1,064 horsepower Corvette ZR1 can really do. We're going to see some hot laps here. Yep, it's a tight track, but we're going to do our best. All right, if I can bring you back, back to your seats. Thank you very much. Woo! Those guys have the best part of the presentation right there. They get to cruise around in the cars. Anyway, um, first of all, uh, Mark said some really nice things about uh, me. 
Um, honestly, one of the other things that's been true about virtually all of the high performance vehicles General Motors has introduced of late, recently, that's our two drivers. <laughs> They'll be, both those drivers will be around here, uh, around the cutouts and other displays that we have if you would like to talk to them, uh, Chris Barber and Eric Link. They represent the development team that does all that integration that Mark was talking about. That's the power uh, of what we do at General Motors. That's why we have some of the best performance sedans and sports cars uh, in the world is the way we do our integration work and the way all the parts work together to create a driving experience that's kind of second to none. And some of the drivers of that kind of organization are right here today. Mark said nice things about me. We wouldn't have Corvettes like we do if it wasn't support. Uh, from Mark or my longtime boss, Ken Morris, is here uh, with us today. Uh, been a huge advocate for performance, a huge performance driver in the organization himself. And we wouldn't get cars like this if we didn't have super support from the top leadership uh, of the company. So thank you so much uh, for that. Okay, so um, Mark and Scott, I believe, are going to stay here uh, on the stage. I'm gonna head back here. I think there's a bar back here. Some of you guys may know that. Um, I'm retiring next Wednesday, so I might head on back there, uh, see what I can find. Uh, but we have a lot of members of the design and engineering teams uh, really happy to, to show off what we've got here. Mark Scott and I, we get to talk you know, with the front men uh, for the team, but it's the team that does the work. Uh, thousands of people at General Motors working hard every day. Um, they don't get to stand up here in the spotlight, but their cars do and uh, we're so proud of all of them. It's just an amazing accomplishment what the Team Corvette can do and what General Motors uh, can do. So lots of fun stuff to look at uh, back there. And so after 47 years, I have to say, it's very sad, a bittersweet moment for me, but it is kind of my pleasure to wrap things up. I sort of wish I was staying. Um, we get to drive these cars as captured test fleet cars and it's really hard not to have the next great Corvette in your driveway. Um, so I hate to give all that stuff up, but uh, my time has come. Uh, my last day of work is next Wednesday. And thank you, everybody in the media, honestly, has supported Corvette uh, all of these years. Uh, listen to what we have to say. We've tried to be brutally honest all the time uh, with what we've got, what we're doing, why we do it. And a lot of that has been captured uh, by the media and has gone out to customers and they really, really appreciate it. So. Thank you very much for that and come on up and let's take a closer look around the corner.